my friends, how are you doing? Today is part two of how to draw digitally a mushroom basket. In part one, we did the mushroom basket drawing. Um, check out the video if you haven't, it's in the description as well. Um, and today we're gonna focus on adding some texture to your mushrooms. So we have three little mushrooms and we're gonna be looking at different methods that I use and how I, how I kind of explore um, adding texture to the mushrooms so that they have more depth. Let's get into it. The mushrooms we will be adding the texture to are the Lactaris indigo, the coral milky cap and the morel. Um, but I essentially um, selected these mushrooms because they offered me a variety of textures, shapes and also complementary colors um, to my artwork. We will start um, with the Lactarius indigo as you can see me already working on here and to get started I had drawn the silhouette in advance. If you want to know how I do that you can check out my previous video on how I drew the basket where I go into more details about that one. Um, but here we're going to focus on the texture and the depth. Um, for mushrooms, I like to separate the cap from the stem into different layers. This makes it just a lot easier later when you're um, working with your um, shadows and highlights on different clipping masks um, that, that the colors don't go um, over each other so it can be a little bit more precise. And then I use three different tones for each object. That is one mid-tone for the silhouette, one dark tone for the shadows and one light tone for the highlights. I also draw these in different layers and as I as, as just mentioned, I would use a, a clip-in mask um, for each of those layers. And also you might have noticed that the cap and the stem have slightly different blue tones. So for each of those, I will also adjust my three color tones that I select for the um, mid-tone, shadow and highlight. The simplest method and my favorite one to apply texture and depth is definitely using the soft round brush. This is even better when you're using a digital pen because it allows you to control the pressure, meaning you can control the opacity and the size of your pen um, as you're drawing. And what's great about this brush is that the transition from one color to the other is very soft. It gives therefore the illusion of a gradient. You can therefore also build gradually the tone that you want by going over the same area, for example, darkening certain Certain areas or brightening them too. Before applying any color, determine where your sun or your light source is coming from. If you're not familiar with these concepts, I've made a, a different video, check it out um, here on the cards, um, where I talk about shadows and lights a bit more. My preference is to always create my sunlight coming from the top left. That is why you see me applying the shadows on the opposite side, so the right bottom of the mushroom. Because the mushroom's edge is sort of curved, it's kind of curving in, I applied shadows along the entire edge, but I added a thicker shadow or like a more of a shadow on the right hand side. When I apply this, I also make sure that I do not have any edgy sections so that everything is sort of, sort of like soft and round because there's no edge surfaces or edge corners on a mushroom. At the tip of my mushroom, there's also a bit of like a dip, meaning the mushroom is not just simply flat. And to show this, I also use the same brush to indicate a little shadow. And even this is a curved line to show that it's like a cylinder-like shape, it's not flat. The trick with the soft round brush is to add and remove simultaneously as you're drawing. You can do this by either selecting your dark colors, if, you're, if we're working on the shadows, in combination with your mid-tones, so that you can switch between them. Or alternatively, you can change the eraser to have a soft round brush shape. And so then you flick between your brush and your eraser with a mat, with the, with the shortcut. So it would be B for your brush and E for your eraser. I'm using the first methods, meaning I switch between the colors, but I have been doing this in this video with the pipette. The better way of doing this, however, is to use your fore and background colors. And the X is the shortcut to switch between the colors. So you can flick between those two colors as you're drawing very, very um, naturally. Um, and it sort of speeds up your process. As for the highlight, we continue to use the soft round brush, but now we think about the brightest areas. The mid-tone already, in contrast to the shadows, shows an elevation, meaning the brighter sections. 
So now we want to sparingly add pops of light. Um, when drawing the highlight, follow as well the curves and the shapes of your objects, just like we did for the shadows, because you don't want to have any straight lines as it would ruin the illusion of the shape. Once I've added the shadows and lights, I continue to build upon those colors, depending on how much contrast I want to um, create. For example, under the cap, the shadow needs to be a lot darker than the rest of the shadows, simply because no light will reach that section. And lastly, in my case, the mushroom right now is in a random section, but I know I will be placing it on, on top of grass, so there needs to be a bit of a shadow as well at the bottom of the stem, don't forget that piece. Now repeat the same process with the second mushroom, and if you want to work more efficiently, you can add swatches to, to the, um, of the colors that you have used already, so that you're more consistent, or just use the pipette, that's what I do most of the time. Um, alternatively, you can also use the swatches window, where you can see the last colors, I think it's like up to 10 colors, that will be shown um, for you as well. Moving on to the coral milk cap mushroom. The principle is the same as before. First, you wanna draw your silhouette, then you select your three color tones and keep the cap and the stem in different layers. For this mushroom, I also use the soft round brush to add the shadows and the highlights and um, because this mushroom also had a hole in the center cap, I used a slightly darker color to indicate that less light would reach that section. For this mushroom, I want to add also a bit more texture on the cap. And when I'm exploring how to replicate textures, I like to do this on a separate layer. This just allows me to delete it, modify it to my liking without worrying about ruining my previous work. There is a huge arsenal of options in Photoshop to explore. And the ones that I used here is a mixture between my brush and brush settings combined with the different blended modes and the layers opacity. To create the fine lines as a texture, I selected a brush that I actually use for drawing hair. I recommend that you check out the Adobe brushes that are available for free. Um, I've added a link in the description, but they give you so much more options to create different types of textures. Um, it will take a bit of time to get familiar with them, but it is so worth it. And lastly, I've also used the blending modes here. Um, they determine how the layer will react with the underlying layer. And even though I'm kind of familiar with them at this point, I really like to look at, through all of them because they can create sometimes really interesting color variations um, and uh, you can essentially just play around with it. I ended up using a soft light blending mode, which essentially brightened the lines uh, just a little bit. Um, this effect is different from using a lighter color, so I encourage you to just play with it and, uh, and see for yourself how, they, how the colors sort of respond and what nuances you can create. You can also check out in the description uh, the link to the blending mode options with all of their definitions. And lastly, the opacity setting is how you can lower the intensity of the effect. And this mushroom, um, I actually wanted just very faint lights, so I lowered the opacity. This third mushroom is the morel, or also called sponge mushroom. With this mushroom, there is two ways you can tackle those spongy parts. You can either focus on the lines by using a lighter color and draw the, those lines that separate the holes from each other. Or you can do it like what I've done here, which is to draw the shadows and show the depths of the holes instead. I used my favorite soft brown brush again and uh, used slightly darker brown tones to place the holes and then with a darker brown tone and a smaller brush size I added a darker spot in the center of those, um, of those areas um, and that gives the illusion of a hole. This is much simpler than trying to draw the walls and the lines that separate them. After adding the texture to the mushroom, I was ready to repeat the same steps we used before to add the shadow on the layer. 
and I made sure this time to use the multiply blending option because the shadows then will be combined with the colors of the textures I just made. So essentially the holes that I just made combined with the shadows. And this helps uh, make certain areas of the shadows darker or lighter depending on the holes, which ends up making the whole thing more realistic. And as you can see, with a simple soft round brush, you can create so many depths and textures as you like. Um, but if you want to ele elevate your game, make sure that you check out the different brushes that exist and how you can modify them in their settings to meet your needs. Plus, there's also over 20 blending options that you can play with, explore, to adjust how the different layers behave with each other. And lastly, the opacity settings um, help you modify the intensity of how your depth and your texture looks. Tools like Photoshop have a huge, huge uh, set of tools and options, but sometimes that can be a bit overwhelming. So I hope that with this video and with these uh, tips and tricks that I have shared, you can see that even with the simplest and most basic tools, you can create really convincing textures and create depth to your artwork. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope this was useful to you. I hope you learned a few methods and tricks on how to create depth to mushrooms, but also in general, how you can explore and find out the different methods to apply texture and depth to your designs. If this video was useful and you liked it in any kind of form or shape, feel free to subscribe so that you don't miss any new upcoming videos and give it a thumbs up. So that would help me a ton. Thank you so much. See you in the next video. Bye.